Okay. <laughs> Good afternoon, class. Good afternoon, class. Good afternoon, sir. Okay. All right. I think you. We have given them almost ten minutes, so I think it's okay. We can we can start the class. I inform the rest that the class has already begun, so okay. they should join. Okay. One thing also is just take it like I see with. It's online, online something. So you not pick any notebook or anything there and be jotting things down. That is not how the online should be. Okay, wherever you are, at least you should have certain book or you know pen and paper and everything so that you jot, you you jot, you jot things down. Okay. Okay, sir. All right. Because don't jot them down when the the day of reckoning, when when they ask you to produce. It, it will be a disaster. So to to prevent that, you should be able to how do you call it? Judge certain things down. I hope I'm clear. Yes, sir. All right. So um, let's start. We you know the naval architecture is very broad, and we have a lot of terms and more definitions and all that. So basically, that's why we are taking our times to let you know all the at least some part of the definitions that you need to know and also the dimensions. Already the lecturer has given you some of them. So today I will also take you through the rest. Then maybe you also have to go and search for the others because you need to know the definitions. You need to know the jargons in the naval architecture so that wherever you find yourself, when someone moving on board, wherever in the nation certain terms, it will not be abstract for you or it will not be new for you. So you have to, take your time and go through all what you have done. The definitions, the type of vessels, and the type of horse, and all that. Make sure you go through all of them, because these things are very important. All right. So um, today's lecture will begin with displacement. And you see the dis displacement symbol there. The symbol there is no a delta. So if you see this in level architecture, you shouldn't displace it as a delta, no. Whenever you see that sign there, I hope you all, you all can see some sign that's as delta, right? That is not delta. When you see that sign in naval architecture, it's, it's displacement, okay? Okay? Okay, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. You can hear me? Yes, Loud we can hear you. All right. So that sign, that yes, sign there is, is displacement. Whenever you see that sign, don't go and say it's a delta, no. It is and what is displacement? We are saying that the mass of vessel of a vessel and all it contains measured in tons. So what we are saying is that you know the vessel we have different types of um, um, ships and you already you already know that and we also know the materials that the ships are made from. So you can get steel, you can have um, FRP, you can have aluminium. Now you have to calculate for its weight. You see, so you have to calculate for it. So the mass of a vessel and all it contains. So now when you calculate it, it will meet weight. When the vessel is in its environment, for instance, if the vessel is in the sea, it, it displaces it in water. So for instance, when you take a um, stone, when you take a stone and you put it in a, a, a jar of water, you will sure you, you, you will see that the, the stone put into the jar will display some water. For instance, if the jar is full of water and you put the stone in it, in it you realize that, that some of the water will, will pour up in that So it doesn't pour that means that you have been able to display some water. In, in English, then you can say that you have displayed some water. So then you can also weigh this water and know the weight of particular stone in the in the in the water or the displaced water that has been put in out. So we are saying that the mass of a vessel in all it contains measured in tons. So you have you have done all you can calculate for all the steel, then the engines, then the propeller, then everything in the ship. Then you can come out to say that this is the mass of what of the vessel or um, how do you call it the weight of what of the vessel. So we are, whenever someone asks you what is the displacement, you should be able to do that. Is the mass of a vessel and all it contains and it's measured in what in tons. Now we go to volume displacement. 
the volume of water displaced by a vessel measured in meters. So here, what we are saying is, as I mentioned earlier on, when you put, um, how do you call it, um, stone in water, uh, it will display a certain amount of water. So where it will display, you see that it also has a, a symbol. The inverted part of the, how do you call it, the displacement is volume of displacement. So for instance, you see that you will be seeing the hole especially when we are on the shores of RMU, you will see the vessel crossing. You realize that the vessel is at a certain um, water line. Some part of the vessel is in the in the water and some part also is, the, is outside. So that part which is in the water, it has displaced some water. Some water. So then we can say that that is what, that is the volume of water displayed by the vessel. I hope you get that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so that is the volume yes, sir. of water yes, sir. treatment. Yes, sir. So when you put the vessel in the water, and realize that the vessel, the vessel has pushed yes, some water away for it to also have, how do we call it, some space to, you know, to, to, to also stay, be able to stay in the water. So that is what we call the volume of displacement. And the sign there depicts the volume of displacement. Sometimes, you know, to write the volume of displacement, just write this sign and people know that this is what a volume of displacement. Then we we'll go to light shape displacement and now bed width. Now, when you say light shape, the mass of a ship has been including mass of water in the boiler, mass of bucket cooling water in the engine, and mass of lubrication oil in the pump of the main engine, all to the working of levels. Now, when you say light weight ship, you see when we are designing, when you see the ship going. We already know what the hole is. Is that not it? We already know the, what the hole is. So now that you know what the hole is, when we are designing or when we are doing any design, we will first design the hole. So that is the first thing. So when you design the hole, or maybe you are not having cargo in it. For instance, maybe you are asked to, you are designing a shape to carry maybe uh, cement to understand that. If, if you, are, you are designing to carry a cement, and now you design and the cement is not in the ship. Now we're having the cement not being in the ship. You only have the in ship there. It's in there. Then when you calculate the mass of that ship, you can say that that is the lightweight of ship. So you are having that with no what weight in it or with no um, goose in it. Then you can say what? You can say that is what in the mass of or the light ship of displacement. The mass of a ship has built in three mass of water in the boiler. So you have all your, how do you call it, all your machineries and everything in the ship, but with no carbon. So when you calculate all the masses, everything, then you can see that the light weight was displacement and it donated by the displacement subscript L. You can see that it means light was shape was displacement. Yeah. Then when you put it in, Dead weight, yes. Please, um, the, the other people are interrupting the sound. I can't hear unless they put the mute uh -huh. their sounds. So, um, gentlemen, um, you, you heard your friends well. They are saying that the noise you are making background is not allowing them to hear what I'm saying. So, so, so either you, you live where you are, so that you reduce the noise, rather than that, your friends will not hear. Okay. Okay, sir. So if you have any, how do you call it, uh, radio or something, just be white because your friends also are not hearing what I am saying. So don't disturb the rest. Okay. All right. So we have dead weight, and the dead weight is the capital letter of DWT. So we are saying that the difference between displacement and lightweight displacement. Now, this one is basically when you say the dead weight is, for instance, maybe you have designed a ship and you have to carry cement. So the cement that you are putting in is what in the dead weight. So for instance, if it's human being, if your vessel is uh, a passenger, the human beings will be a cargo. Or when you see all this thing, then you can say it's a dead weight. It's a dead weight. I, I hope you get it. Hello. Gentlemen, I, I hope you get it. Sir, please, they, they should mute their sound. They should mute it. We can't, we, it's interrupt. We can't hear you well. They should mute their sound. If they won't say anything, then they unmute mute it. Okay, gentlemen, mute your sound. Then, 
if you want to say something, you just unmute, then you, you, you ask. I hope you can hear now. I hope it's okay now. Yes, sir. Yes, All it's right. okay. It's okay. So now you know what a dead weight is. Now let's go to dead weight coefficient, which is C subscript D. All these things you have to you have to put them in mind. So we said the ratio of dead weight to displacement. So we have we are saying that dead weight coefficient is the ratio of dead weight to what displacement, which is DWT over what the displacement. Now what this means is that in calculation, when you do and you are getting something like 0 0.9, when when or 0 0.8, this shows the, the volume of or space you have to carry this. So for instance, if you make any calculation, you are getting a higher number, then it means that the volume of space you are having is, is large to carry of more of more boost. So that is what dead weight or coefficient, the ratio of dead weight to displacement. And what I am saying is that when you are doing calculation, you are having more CD, it means that the space you are having in the ship is very large to uh, receive more of cargoes. And the diagram there depicts that. So, so, so you see the diagram there. Now, you first you can see that we have dead weight cargo in the box, and the blue the blue diagram is water. Oh. You, you understand that? Hello. Yes. yes. So you can see that we have the we dead weight. You, sir. we have the dead weight and we have the light weight. So the light weight is the hull and the things in it, and the red mark shows with the dead weight or the cargo. So you see that. In the first diagram, it has nothing as they have not put it in the water. So when you get you get to the second diagram, when you get to the second diagram, you realize that there is no what there is no cargo in the vessel, right? But the vessel has displaced some water. So that is what light or displacement. That is the light with or displacement. When you put the vessel in the water, you realize that the green thing the the water has the direct the water has increased. So that increase there becomes what? The displacement of what? Of the ship. And then when you get to the third diagram, you realize that this one, they have added what? They have added cargo to the what? To the lightweight. Or that is the whole of the ship and the things in the ship. Now I realize that the water also has increased. So now when you add the dead weight volume and now you add the um, lightweight volume, then you can get what? The, uh, the displacement or the mass displacement of the vessel. You know, we do all these things so that we'll be able to calculate for the droughts and the, um, and the free board and other stuff. So it's very imperative for you to actually understand these things. Know the, um, the, the dead weight, know the light weight of the ship, know what it entails when someone says dead weight, know what it entails when someone says um, um, and get a light weight so that in your design it will it will help you or it will actually give you fair knowledge about how you can work you can work things out and i also said you know, that we have dead weight coefficient this dead weight coefficient is now telling you how the volume of places or spaces you have in your ship or how you can work you can the number uh, the tonnage that you can carry so if whoever is the naval architecture see your cd you should be able to predict the, the cargo you should be carrying at a certain point in time. I hope it's clear. Yes, then we now move yes. to modded breadth or beam. Within what, what type of section is this? What type of view are we doing? The diagram there, what type of view is that? Double That's the end End view. Yes. Um, uh, did you do anything like end view in in naval architecture? Transverse. Transverse. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 We have taken our time to you know, take you through all so that you're not going to be yourself and the lecturer too. Okay, so we have the modded breadth or beam. Now, this is the difference when you are reading and you see anything like modded breadth. The modded breadth and breadth is true. 
you can see that they have written B sapphic E there from the diagram. Now, this is what it means. You see, the modern breath is like you are using um, um, inside caliper. So, when you are using inside caliper to measure something, this, this one there, they are measuring inside what? Inside the transverse section. So, that is the modern word breath. And the breath extreme is they are measuring outside what? Outside the hole. So, in this one, it includes the the whole thickness. You can realize that the uh, breadth extreme includes what the whole thickness, but the breadth modded just includes the space within what in the so it's a modded breadth or beam. The maximum breadth of the ship measured at the midship section to the inside of the side what plating, and you already do the side plating. So we are saying that inside of what on the side plating that becomes what a breadth what modded. So if I ask you what is a breadth modded, you should know how to define it. And if I ask you to extreme breadth or B, you can see that the maximum breadth taken over all extremites. You see, over all what extremites. So it means that we are taking the breadth extreme with what? With the side what? Plating included. So we are saying that the maximum breadth taken over all what? The extremites. So that becomes what? The difference between the breadth modded in the extreme what's breadth. So it's like more or less when you are designing, you should know your breadth, you should know your length, you should know your width, and then and it goes with that. Then we also have modded depth. Now, when you talk of the depth, it's like the vessel from the base to the top of the wall. So we are saying that the depth measured at midship, at shape side midship from the baseline to the heel of the upper that is the freeboard deck b so what you are saying that the depth is from the baseline when the vessel is there you already know the hole so now you are measuring from the baseline to the uppermost deck the uppermost deck that you have that becomes the modern or depth then you have the extreme the as i said if you if you have you are adding certain things to it so you see the depth measured at shape side from the top of the upper deck to the lowest point of the key so at the lowest point of the key you already know what a key also is because you did it the last time then we go to modern draft the depth measured at the midship session from the baseline to the summer load line you already know the low uh, the summer load line as for instance and when you see the vessel moving, you realize that there's a thermal line where the water forms the surface with the cut to the surface with the hole. So now we are saying that the modern draft, which is donated by D, also know the, the its donations. So we are having the small letter D, and we have capital letter for what? For the modern depth or the depth. So know the difference. The depth, when you see capital D, then that one is the depth. When you see the modern breadth, then you have the smaller what D. Unless it is being stated in the question that used a modern depth of this and the small and it's donated by small letter. Other than that, this is how it's supposed to. So the, the draft is where the water has covered of the hole. So all the parts in water of the hole now becomes what the draft. I hope you get that. So when you go some, somewhere and then you say, what is draft? What is draft? You should be able to tell the person what draft is. And we have the extreme draft. We said them taking admission from the lowest point of the key to the summer low line. The vertical distance measured from the lower point of a shape hole to the water line on the water surface. So that becomes on the draft. So we have the draft model. We have the draft of the extreme. And what you are saying that the draft is actually depth measured at the mission section from the baseline to the summer hole, load what line that becomes what the draft what the draft so when someone asks what is a draft you should be able to what you should be able to say i hope you understand it yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, hope, I hope you understand yes sir, it. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. then you go to load line Low line marks or summer low line. Mark to indicate a sign of mode. Sir. Sir. Yes. Please tell Ransford to mute his sound. He's, he's interrupting the sound. Okay. Uh, 
last one, you heard what your colleague said. Mute your, uh, your so that you don't disturb them. Okay. I hope it's clear now. You can hear. So right. he, he, so hasn't on mute he, he hasn't muted. He hasn't muted. He hasn't muted. Trans transferred. Okay, he has done it. Okay, all right. All right. So we have low line mark or summer load line. And we are saying that mark to indicate assign what free board. Now all the vessels that has been designed before you you will be able I will give you that accreditation and all that. They check all these things. So, as I said earlier on, you, before you design, you first have to calculate for your displacement. So, you calculate for your dead weight, you calculate for your, um, how do you call it, your light weight, then you look. So, from there, you can use that actually to determine where your uh, blue line mark should be. So, for instance, if it's, if it's a carbon ship that you are designing, and then you, you, finish, you finish the design. Without no how do you call it, load mark, no summer line, no one will permit you to you know to operate in the in the environment. So then it's it's, it's good that when you finish, you should be able to locate all these ones. And then when at every port they will they will call and ask what is your draft, what is that, and all that. So when they see that you are above above what exactly you are supposed to, you know what you are what you are supposed to carry, then they will return you. Because before they give you the accreditation, all these things will be put in place. So we are saying that a mark to indicate assigned free board. So at every point in time, there is some free board we have to you have to observe so that you not overload, you not you know, especially overloading. But I don't think someone will you know buy a ship and says that he will he will not load it to its maximum. Neither than that, he will he will be at lost. So he will never do that. He will. Either he will, the most at times is he will overload it. And when you overload, no port will allow you to enter. So you will find yourself you want it. So we are saying that the load mark, line mark, as you go on, you will get to know how to calculate for all that. Then we go to the free board. We are saying that the vertical distance measured at the ship side, mid ship, between the summer load line and the free board deck. A free board deck being the uppermost continuous deck which has permanent means of closing all openings and below which all openings in the ship side have water tight or closing. So what basically means that from where the, the water got to from your, uh, the level of how you call it, the ship. So for instance, if you now know your drafts and you know your depths, then you can subtract your draft from what? From the depth you'll be able to get to what? Your free board and there are conventions basically on on this. So when when they are setting they are setting load and it all what all it free board. So from the summer load line upwards becomes what becomes your free board. So if you overload, they will they will they will detect and know that no you are having a less what free board, um, and then they will they will detain you. And mostly the tankers and co have you know higher less free board because of it. And when you're coming for this stability and all that, realize that because of the carry, sometimes they always have you know less or free board. But when it comes to container and other stuff like that, realize that they are free board are very large in a setting in it's all about how they call it calculations. So you have to know what is load line mark and free board too. And um, the load line marks are from you know since we are organized by how do you call it we always check by IMO and all that they came out with a specific word ways to you know design the how do you call it the the load marks so here we are saying that the lines which are marked and painted midship on each side of a ship to indicate the maximum permissible draft of loading are just for various seasons and zones so at every season for instance maybe when you are in the uh, summer, there is, there, is, there is a certain, how do you call it, no line you have to get to when you are in winter or when you are in the tropics or maybe when you are from maybe um, and sea and you are moving into uh, water, uh, fresh water, there is this kind of you know, free board and draft you have to maintain. And you know that I see what I see that than the fresh water. So for instance, when, when Nigeria and other, other countries where you move from the sea water, to the fresh water if you are loading 
and you don't you don't determine you don't go according to certain calculations and you just know that you get there when you get there they will they will not allow you to you know, enter so this is the this is how the thing is done that's from the classification of society name of classification society so they name it and all the side of every ship you see this marks there so when you see the s the s is summer moon water line when you see the t the t is tropical load water water line and we also have the summer fresh water line tf means tropical fresh water line the w there means what winter line the w a a means winter north what atlantic what line so all these ones have been done and you know, and script on the hull of the vessel when you go to youtube or wherever you will get to know you get to see how they call it a video or pictures of how these things has been what and script on every how do you call it every ship without that they will not permit you so at every season you should be able to know where exactly your load line should be you so for instance when you are tropical load water line when you are in the tropics you should be able to know exactly where your what your load line is that is how you can load essentially how you can load so mostly the dead people as this day whenever they are moving the voyage maybe from Maybe if it's from uh, Accra here to maybe Tema here to maybe Nigeria or wherever, they will do the, their calculation and know that, okay, if you are loading from here, we know that maybe we will go into, we will, we will move from seawater to fresh water. So when we are loading, this is how we're supposed to, supposed to know so that when we get there, we will not, we will not even sink or maybe we will not be permitted to enter. So there is the signs that you as the, Never architecture or something have to move so that when you are also design you incorporate into your what into your design there are a lot of calculations on this but yours is to just know about how these things are done and how they are being inscribed on what on the on the uh, core of the ship when maybe when you have the chance to do your intention or something you will see all of these things then we move on to the what's the draft what's marked so here we have the the load marks and we have what the draft of marks figures worded on the bow midship and stem of each side of a shape shell plating to indicate drafts the distance is read from the lower edge of each number that is the baseline draft measured at the bow is called forward draft and at the stem is called after draft you know some of the uh, ships almost or they they have to they they come out with this max at the at the four and what and at the aft. Now the reason being that you see this is when we are when we are dealing with stability and all that and resistance. When when you move into stability and resistance and you want to at a certain point you realize that your when you are in a certain uh, environment, for instance, when the sea waves are very high, realize that you will not have a calm water for you to operate in a certain you know certain level so sometimes you will have what you call the pitch so either your vessel will be moving the the, the forward will be moving up you know and becoming slamming and all that so in stability how do you call it analysis this will help you to understand okay at a certain point when i'm having a, a wave of maybe 10 meters 20 meters and my vessel you know tilt in this form this is the draft I should, or this is the draft I should, I should have, or maybe when you are loading, you, you load close to the aft, and you load more. They realize that your vessel will be like, you know, this kind of uh, this trotro, some type of trotro. You sit and realize that uh, the, the back is very down, and the forward is up. You know, the ties at the back has. So when you have a blue person. At, at the back, you realize that it, it, it's, it's not it's not that balance. You realize that yes, so you'll be able to if your ship is like you'll be able to also know the drafts at the at the back, and also you know the what the drafts at the forward. And in, in design, it's not good for you to have high drafts at the back and you know, or high high drafts at the forward and have what less. So that's how come we have calculations. We have done much there. For you to know exactly how the whole thing was supposed to work, so we have we have a load max in the in the midship, load max at the midship. So you see that 
And then you see also draft mark at the forward and at the aft. These things are done for you to understand. But at this point, you should know, you should be able to know what draft mark what is. Do you have any question? No, sir. Okay, are you clear with that? So if you ask you what is load mark, you'll be able to say what is draft mark, you'll be able to say, right? Yes, sir. Question. Okay. Uh, please, uh, don't ocean tides affect the summer, summer load lines? Like maybe when you have high tides, uh, the sea level will be above the load line or something like that. Yes, um, this is, that's why you see we have summer and we have what uh, a winter. <laughs> you understand? At at summer, the 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 the, uh, the, the sea or the, the environment you are creating changes. Is that not it? At winter, it it also what it also change. So at a certain point, that's why we have that. So if you are in the winter, you should be able to have it there. You should be able to have your load line at that particular point. If you are having in and when we are moving also into fresh water. We should so that is that's why we are saying that loading adjusts for various seasons. You see, so every season and where this yes, every season and where this mark has to be. You understand? You cannot be in fresh water and your and your your load line will be around winter north Atlantic line. Uh, you you see it, which which will not be favorable for you. You see, so that is it. I play now. Hello. The one who asked the question. Hello. I think it's gone off. It's, it's clear, right? Yeah, maybe his network is gone off. Let's continue. And the, and the network is gone, all right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we, we will continue. Okay, so. What time are you supposed to close the class? Five, right? Five. You have to end the class five or five thirty. Yeah. Five, five. Sir. All right. So yes, sir. We have design drafts. The maximum draft to which a ship can load as per the load lines regulations. So <clears throat> we have load lines regulations. Those who will be doing ship design and all that too. You will know much more about low lines regulations. So, say the maximum drive to which a ship can load. So, for instance, if if you, if the the, the naval actor designed the ship to carry thousand tons of maybe cement, and then and the entry is that the the vessel has to load thousand tons of what cement, and it will also give you the maximum draft. So, for instance, if the thousand tons of the cement should be at a draft of maybe uh, two meters or three meters then you will go and load and get a draft of maybe maybe uh, four meters it means that it's against what the regulations so we are saying that design drafts must one draft to which a ship can load as per the load lines of regulation so there are some maximum you can load up to you cannot load below or you cannot load beyond that maximum then we have scandling or drafts the maximum draft at which the ship can we stand all loose safety. In other words, it is the draft at which the strength of the ship is built. So we see that we have different types of drafts. We have the design draft, scrambling draft, and we have the bad draft. So we are saying that the design draft is the maximum, the maximum at which it's supposed to load up to. Then we have the scrambling draft, and we are saying that the maximum draft at which the ship can withstand all the load load safety. In other words, it is the draft at which the ship strength the ship is built. So, for instance, we have the maximum and we have the scanning. So, maybe you have to load maybe uh, maybe 10,000 tons of maybe cement in the vessel. That is the design, uh, how do you call it? That is the design draft that it has to be. But um, sometimes, you know, maybe it should be at maybe two meters. But either it could be, it has to also operate at a certain safety. So sometimes you don't load up to that what, up to that level. So for instance, if it's uh, uh, three meters or three feet, or maybe let's say, let me use meters. So when it, maybe three meters that it has to load up to. So you need not to get to that exact, how do you call it, exact three meters. 
You go when you get that, it means that you have the critical or that's critical, anything, any load that you add on to might cause a lot of what a lot of problem. So we don't usually load up to that level. And then you do that, it means that but you know there are regulations that will show you there are certain safety margins that you have to leave. And there are certain places, okay, when you load up a certain level, you should leave that margin. So we are saying that becomes on the standing of draft. Then go to the bar draft, maximum draft which a ship can take to pass over a bar or what sandman bank. So for instance, maybe when you are coming to uh Tema, Tema, Tema port, then they have heap some how do you call it sand and the seabed. You know, they have heap some sand at the seabed or some place, and your vessel needs to come. It means that you still have to have a certain draft that will permit you to, to enter. For instance, maybe you are coming in there, they are saying they are doing some work or something, but still you need to So it means that there's a certain draft you, you have to pay. So it means that you have to put all these ones into consideration before you even will start loading. So you are saying the maximum draft which a ship can take to pass over a bar or something. So for instance, maybe there is some emergency or something and you still need to work to enter the certain draft that has been set for you to you know, for you to be able to enter into what into the into the um, into the port then we also have the air draft and it's the vertical distance measure from the ship's water line to the highest point on the ship really comes into position when the ship has to sail under overhead bridges in the river and the air draft is very very important. The, the air draft is very important, especially when we are level like we are designing. So we have certain canals, and we have, you know, we have a lot of uh, limitation. For instance, if have you a are, okay, well, let me finish with the air draft. So, for instance, when we are designing the vessel to pass under the Adomi Bridge, then that one will be a typical example. Uh, the, you have to know the height you you will give it to it. So if you are designing accommodations and other stuff on top of the deck, you should know the distance from the other bridge from the top to the down so that the vessel can be passing under it. Neither than that, if you design anything above the, the other bridge, the, the vessel cannot pass. You understand? So we are saying that the vertical distance measured from the ship's water line. So first you have to know the draft first. So when you know the draft, then you can be able to know there are some canals that have you no know, limitations. So some of the things you need to know, those are the designer, the the owner will give you certain um, dimension, that will give you certain things. So the owner will give you the route, the voyage, he will also give you the dead weight. These are the things that the owner will give you to you. So the owner will come to you, the naval architect, and tell you that, oh, I want to design the, how do you call it, the type of vessel maybe, I want to design a container vessel of maybe dead weight of maybe 20,000 tons. Then you tell you that, then you have to give you a voyage. Okay, maybe the vessel where I'll be transporting the, the cargo will be for maybe uh, Akosongo to uh, maybe, where is the end? Where is the Adobe Bridge? This, you know, it will be taking routes from there. Then it means that when you are designing, you should consider the Adobe Bridge. You are not like that if you design anything above higher than you design maybe instead of three accommodation, you make four, five, six stories on top of the how do you call it of the vessel before you realize it will not cross. The owner will not take them, they will not take the vessel, you you will run at lost. So the air draft is very important. You yeah, ask your question. Mm -hmm. Who said he has a question? It's a feed. Yeah, it's yeah, okay. So how is this drafting done? Is it, is it that um, there's an indication inside the ship that will tell you that this is the limit of the draft that you are supposed to, I mean, the maximum draft that you are supposed to, to take? All right. Um, the designer comes with all these things. The designer will design and tell you that, OK, this particular ship I have designed, this should be the maximum draft. This should be the uh, uh, the bad draft. This should be the scambling draft. You understand that? Now, these things are inscribed on the on the hall. So when you pick well, any any ship, when you go, you see some marks there. You see they have they have they have numbers on the hall of the ship. So the designer come out with that, and mostly these things they 
the deaf people will, will work, work with it because they know where, where you are going and all that. So, and we have documents also in the ship. The, the, the ship has manual. So the manual is there. So they know that, okay, if we are loading from here to here, this is what we have to do. For instance, the depth at uh, Thermaport, that is when we are coming to bed, the depth there for a ship to come in is, is different from the depth which is even at uh, how do you call it, Nigeria and other places. So that's why when you are coming, you first have to call the port that you are going. Then they will ask you, okay, so you will mention your, your ship name, your, your, the draft that you are bringing. Then they they can tell you okay this draft you can you can bet here or they will tell you this draft you cannot bet here because we are having shallow waters and all that so mostly these ones are design parameters that comes with the ship so you will you will know even if you are in the ship and you go and ask at the top there so at what draft are we they will they will tell you okay hello. Okay, sir. Do you understand it now? So, so it's not you, it's not you. Okay, I'm getting it. Yes, but, but then you can determine by maybe loading. You see, when you are loading, if it's, if it's actually a cargo ship, when when you load your, your or any other type of ship, even if it's passenger vessel and more people are coming on board, your vessel will go down. Is that not it? When when people are not more on board, you add that yeah. your vessel. That's why when they come to the when they come to port, they will be having a a higher lower capacity. Now when they offload everything, you realize that the vessel will come up. So when when you when you go and do your internship or something like that, when the vessels come, you realize that some of you know some of them you not even see the rubber's bow and all that. But after they offload and they are going, then you see some of them you see their rubber's bow, you see some kind of things. You see, so it means that. They are, their vessel is up now because they have offloaded some of what of the things. So these are the uh, definitions. You know, I was using tonnage, tonnage, tonnage. So we have tonnage, we have gross tonnage, we have net tonnage. Those who have worked before, when when you work, uh, when they pay you, you see that you have gross pay. So if it's thousand that they have paid you. Uh, the dice your gross, then they will tell you they have deducted snakes, they have deducted hot words before you realize you have small money going home. So, uh, with these two, you say we have gross tonnage and we have what net or tonnage. So, so that is it. So, we will know the difference between tonnage, gross tonnage, and net what tonnage. So, we are saying that tonnage, the capacity of a merchant ship expressed in ton, one ton is equal to 40. Feet that is 1.13 meter cube of freight, or 100 feet that is 2.83 meter of bulk or cargo. <laughs> the capacity of a merchant ship is priced, and you also you know we did a merchant ship, you know we did the different types of ships and classification of ships and all that. So, when you talk of the capacity of a merchant ship, as I said, on the CD actually express the volume at which you can carry. So when they tell you that uh, this vessel can carry a certain, how do you call it, amount of cargo, for instance, um, maybe you can carry the cement. I always use cement because that's what I think some of you might know. So for instance, how many capacity can you pack in the vessel? So if you're having uh, 300 and all is maybe one bag of cement 50, right? Uh, so you have 50 kg. So when you when when you when you add all these ones and all that, then you'll be able to know the capacity. So the designer will tell you, okay, this or the the owner tells the one who is designing, maybe I'll be taking my capacity of the ship I want should be maybe thousand tons. You see, or maybe I'll be carrying a cargo of a thousand tons. It means that you have to design what a vessel with a cargo space that will fit what the thousand what tons. So we are saying that the tonnage, the capacity of a merchant ship is in what in tons. So the capacity means that the what the ship can carry. Yes, what the ship what can carry. So we are saying the term derived from the taxation paid on 
tons of cracks of wind, that is okay. So we have gross tonnage. The total includes space or internal capacity of a vessel. So we have uh, different, how do you call it, uh, spaces in the ship. We have the machinery space, we have the cargo space, we have the galley, we have the accommodation, we have all and all that. You see, we have tanks, they are all what include what spaces in the in the ship. So they are in the total enclosed space or internal capacity of what of a ship. That becomes what the gross of tonnage. Now the net tonnage is what will actually the, the space that will actually give you money. You understand? Because the engine room will not give you money. But the the other part maybe we will create a, a space where maybe you have dry cargo in it. You, you that is what it will give you money. So the net tonnage is the it's a measurement of the amount of revenue producing space of a ship. So with this, so there are some spaces like the accommodation. The accommodation spaces you go and sleep there. Uh, it, it, it will not it will not fetch the owner any money. You understand? But the the revenue producing space that is there are some cargo spaces that will fetch the what the owner more money. That is what sometimes he is interested in. So when we are designing, recently we were designing much, the person said, oh, I need, uh, he wants to, he wants the ship to carry 15 people. And he said, no, 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 this, this place, this place, it cannot carry 15, it, can, it, it cannot have no 15. We said, no, 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 he needs that. You know, so it, beca it became a hot what argument. He wants more space so that he can do, he can have more money. But then the design, we told him, Considering the environment is going to operate, it will not be advisable. So, when you say net tonnage, it's a measurement of the amount of revenue producing space of what of a ship. So, you now know tonnage, you now, you now know gross tonnage, and now know not net what tonnage. I hope I'm clear with that. Hello. I hope you can hear me. Yes, sir. All right. Okay, so we also go to the tonnage mark. So, is in the tonnage mark is almost the same as what the load line was marks by here using the the kind of um, this thing that is put in there. So, is it a mark placed on each side of a vessel? Mischief to indicate in it. Draft what limitations imposed as a result of exempting the space between the second and upper deck from what? From tonnage. So, this is that we have, have this. Uh, these are the designs for, designs for it and how to design it or to inscript it. They are all measurements. You cannot just, just draw something as if they are, how do you call it? Uh, they are just artwork. Mm -hmm. They are not artwork. Just design a, a, something like Z and put some more. They are not artwork. So you can see that from the load marks, we have some spaces and we have some measurements. All this, and we have the tonnage mark or table. So all this you can find in the, some of the uh, load line conventions, IMO Solas, you know, all the books you can, you can, you can find some of these ones in it. So they are they are somewhat measurement in in them. All right. right. So we also move on to belt. These things you have to be able to remind all these ones. So when you go to belt, the section of the ship's hull usually curve, where it joins the vertical side to the horizontal at the bottom. Uh, one thing about design also is those who have been using answers. The answer software. You realize that um, when we are doing the stress analysis and where we want to find the um, how we did uh, how do you call it uh, strength of material. So when when you want to find places that have you know, um, more stress concentration, realize that when you are having uh, sharp uh, sharp curves, T T junctions, and all that, your 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 stress concentration will be more there. So we, as a designer, we should be able to actually reduce that in design of the ship. That is sometimes what we, we intend of doing to eliminate all these stress points. 
So we have the Belge there. The, 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 the ground there, the Belges. So we are saying the session of the ships for usually care, which joins the vertical side to the horizontal bottom. So the vertical shell, you will know the shell, the plate, plate shell, and we also have the bottom side. So you see, we don't want that kind of L thing. So we, we, we design something like a curve, you know, to curve it so that we reduce the stress concentration there. So that or when you are when you are in your environment, that place will not burst for you to, you know, for air, for air ingress. So that becomes your bilge. And we have the uh, bilge radius. The radius are the uh, circular arc forming the what the bilge. So those that will come and do short course in a uh, uh, massive when you come, we will show you how the build radius is being calculated. We will show you how you know we will show you how to calculate the build radius and all that. But you, in this level, you should be able to just know what a build radius is. So I urge all of you to come and do cheap business and you will know the radius at each and every point. What you have to do. You have a rise of um, of a floor, and you see those ones uh, when you have the hydro hydrostatic lift. You know, we are so we are the rise of the floor where the transmission section at the bottom of the ship is not horizontal. You know, the, the ship you shouldn't design the ship where it will lie flat in 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 design, but at least you have to give it some kind of you know, and all these things are in the form of stability too. You know, to give it a form of Stable or a stable hole. So we are saying that where the transverse initiation at the bottom of a ship is not horizontal, the rise of floor is the height above the baseline measured at the what at the mission. So as you can see in the third diagram, see that the hole it has it, it for it's more actually lying uh, on the floor. There is a there is a rise there. So that's what we call the rise of what of a floor. When you get when you go to the rise, you see how, especially when they are the dark place, you see how you know, the bottom is there's no actually line what line flat. So that becomes the rise of what. And we have when you are designing, they are they are certain degrees you have to you have to measure. You cannot just rise it, you cannot just do anything and go away. No. Each and every we have 15, we have 20, we have 20 degrees from the baseline, we have 10 degrees from the baseline, depending on the type of vessel you are, you are dealing with. So if you are dealing with fishing vessel, you should know its rise of floor. If you are dealing with uh, cargo, you should know its rise of floor and all that. So this actually comes into it in design. So as a neighbor, you should be able to have friendly knowledge about how that place is. Then we have a round of beam. How they come back. Cavity of deck. In the transverse direction measured as the height of the deck at the center line above the height of the side of the reference. So you see from the um, fourth design, from the fourth uh, diagram we are showing here, we realize that the, the deck is not flat. We realize that the deck is not flat like a table. You see, it's not flat. It's, it's at the, at the mid, mid section, it, it has a certain rise. And as it's getting to the eighth end, there is some slope, so that becomes what we come back. Now, the reason why this thing is there is because you know, you might face how you call it, um, the, uh, you know, how you call it, um, bad weather, rain will fall, you know, and all that. So, at least to give it a curve that when maybe there's a rain or something, it will be able to move to the others. And other that, if you design it, there is a slope in the middle, you know, when 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 there's something on it or when there's you no. Know, Sea water being on board and all that, it's very difficult for you to get it out. Then we have the temple home, the amount by which the side of the ship falls in from the bread model line, really employed in both modern ships. So this temple home is also being incorporated in the design. Especially, we have these different types of them. Then we have the share. I hope you can see the, the diagram. I hope you can see the diagram. You, you did length, you did yes, a length yeah. overall, you did length on water, you did length between perpendicular and all that you did it with the with the with the senior lecture. Mm -hmm. So um, you can also see the root of 
So you already know the forward perpendicular and the aft perpendicular. So now what we are trying is the rake of stain. You realize especially the the the, the, the vessel which has Google's bow. The vessel which has Google's bow. that when the Google's bow, after the Google's bow, the vessel has some straight line there. They are the four and we realize that has some straight line. And now the angle that forms with the Google's bow so needs to be calculated. Now than that, you can design it in a, a long run. That was by weaving. There will be a hole there that ingress of water can enter. So that's what we call rake of water stem. So here there are some angles you have to calculate. So you can you can see that the the fourth perpendicular meeting the what the water what the water line forms certain angle there. So where that angle is what they call rake of water of stem. So where that angle you see that the there is what summer do line. And now there is the forward perpendicular, so it's cutting exactly, exactly on the, on the ball. Ball. So, so where it's cutting, that is where the angle needs to be what needs to be calculated. That is ten week alternative definition. So that is what is the all these things are you know, in designing. You have to calculate for all that. Then we move on to entrance. You see, when the vessel is in the how do you call it in the in the environment or in the sea. It goes to a lot of resistance, and uh, and when you get to a thing level two, you'll be doing the different types of resistance. And when we are picking the length, the length you should consider resistance. When you are picking beam, you should consider resistance. You know, when you are picking depth, you should also consider resistance. As in how the the water will react to the to the ship. Yes. So you, and when as the uh, vessel of two is moving. So, for instance, when you are designing naval vessel, you see that the naval vessel have a different shape, slender or shape, rather than uh, how do you call it the cargo shapes and other stuff we are seeing. Because with that, we, we they need more speed. So the entrance and all that will be also determine the type of vessel you can use, and it all comes in design. So when you say entrance, the gradual reduction in section towards the stem from the parallel middle body to encourage smooth flow of water around the hole. So that is the entrance. And we have the run. So you can also see the run at the back. So the entrance, when the water is at the fore, when the water is cutting through the um, is in the sea or in its environment, realize that it will be you know, passing around it. Then it has to also move. It has to move. So when it's in that is the run. So the gradual reduction in section towards the stem from the parallel middle body to guide and encourage smooth flow of water residing away from the hole and into what, into the propeller so it's like the entrance the water is running you have to that is the entrance and when the water also is leaving that becomes on the run the forward shoulder as you can see from the diagram the point where the entrance joins the parallel middle body so when initially when he was explaining he said he 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 explained the 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 the, the parallel body. He explained the forward perpendicular and the aft perpendicular. So you know where parallel body is. You know where the other ones are. So you have the aft shoulder, the point where the run joins the parallel middle body. That becomes of the aft shoulder. All right. Then we come to ballast. Any weight in solid or liquid form taken on board to increase draft, to change trim, or to improve the stability. All right, so we have different ways to, you know, to keep stability. Whether we use fins, you know, we have some of our fins attached to the wall, or you know, put in as a solar liquid for taking it off. So some, some of the things you can use your fuel and you know, that and to do or is used to stabilize so some to have water and you know, other stuff in it so for instance if your vessel is you know moving to uh, starboard too much there are certain degrees in design there are certain degrees that if your vessel is moving and and and, and passes that degree you might capsize so when when you realize that no it's going too much you have to pump water to the other side you know so that you can you can bring it back to its normal 
still uh, it's 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 equilibrium rather than that it's of half size. So that is how you can do to work balance. So we are saying that any weight in solid or liquid from form taken on a ship to increase draft, to change strain, or to improve the stability. So either, for instance, your vessel is too you know high and want it to you know calm down, and we already know draft already want it to calm down. You can put in more whether solid or more what um, liquid just to the vessel down to change strain. As I said in that one, if if your vessel will have to make sure that it's, it's in the it's in the equilibrium position, no, there's only maybe zero. So the equilibrium is zero, then it's been new. You in normal sense that you cannot get shape in upright like on this move, it will be moving that way. But at least it should be in what in a comfortable what in a comfortable uh, comfortable zoom for each and everyone you know to enjoy. Other than that, there is some video that when you watch some people are on chairs and the vessel, you know, the stability was not good. So it moves this person here and bring the person that you know a lot of you know, scattering everywhere. That is what we are preventing. So when you hear anything of ballast, you have to know it's any weight in solid or liquid form taking on a shape to increase draft, to change trim, or to improve what the stability. And this ballast, you will meet it in systems, you will meet it in a, a whole lot of you know subjects. So you just have to know what ballast is. Then draft survey. Survey carried out to determine the cargo weight on board and measuring the shapes of drafts. So when you are coming, there are, there are surveys, you have the state, so we have the classification society and all that. So when you are coming in your draft, it is, they, will, they will check. So when they check and they see that, Charlie, what you are bringing is, it, 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 it's no good. They will, they will, they will, they will either arrest to a ship or you know, subdivision movement. What a line used to determine the subdivision of vessel for compliance with solar. The deepest division, and we have the essence of summer salt water, refers to the draft of the ship in salt water when it is loaded to eight summer low line in the open sea. So, we, these are some of the, how do you call it? These are some of the um, definitions you have to know as you are about to dive into the course itself. So, these are some of the, not all. And we have to go and search for all the you have to go and search for you you have to go and search for all the all the definitions i, I hope we, i'm clear any questions so far mm -hmm. any questions so far hello no sir there is no question Mm. No, sir. No question. Yes, sir. All right. So, what uh, if we ask you to define 10 or 15 definitions of what we have done, you'll be able to do that, right? No, sir. I would like you to explain what the recall stem is. What? Come again. Recall stem. Break of stem. All right. Break of stem. All right. I'm going there. Break of stem. All right. What I said down. Let's read the inclination of the stem. Step two. The vertical defined by either the angle to the vertical or the distance between the intersection of the stem produced through the baseline and the forward or perpendicular. Yes, you, you have seen the uh, how do you call it? the diagram here. You see the diagram. I hope you see the diagram there. Now go yes. to the forward side. You see where the bubbles are? You see it? Have you seen yes. it? Yes. Now, yes. There is someone doing line there, and there is forward perpendicular, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Now you, you realize that there is the fourth perpendicular and the summer low line forms at an angle there. So, you see it? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. So that is what still what make the angle that is from there. And I said in that like, this one, especially when, when you are when you are going to into design, how do you see it? 
Now, when you are going to, you can just do anything and go a spot free. No, you have to calculate for this angle. So, go, you might not show it, but when you are going to you know, tender it or when you are going to ask for accreditation for the vessel to be you know, operated on the environment, they will ask you all these things and you have to be able to calculate for them. And when you go to that and all that, they have these calculations there. At what angle you should have at that particular point, if, if you don't have it, and they will not accept it. You understand? So that is the stand as you can see there. That is so the angle from there. So after the goes by, you know, you have to and you need not to be straight. The reason why these things are all there is because to reduce your stress or stress concentration there. Because if if you do it that kind of V V shape, this that you will, you will surely have a lot of stress concentration and that you even cause maybe promotion along the line. So that's what we are we are trying to prevent. So anytime you are designing, they, they ask you of that. You know, they, they ask you of that. Like, you know, um, what is the uh, um, cost then? And you have to, you have to, you have to provide for them. Uh, you get it now. Is there a question? All right, yes, sir. Uh, please, sir, uh, you said um, sometimes they use, you can use your fuel to ballast the ship. Yeah. Um, please, uh, so what if you, you, you get short of fuel um, on, on the sea and you are using your fuel to, to ballast it? What yeah, no, listen, if, 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 if you get short, if you, if, how do you call it? If along the line your fuel gets, uh, you get shortage of fuel or you don't have any, uh, how do you call it, fuel in the vessel, then this one there, you are in a serious mess. Uh, and that thing, it's true. I don't know, maybe at that time when you get that, the, you, you, you have to even suck yourself before you get to. Because you can, there's no way you get, you get shortage of fuel. Like, not to send you to your destination. You know. And then unless, I don't know, well, maybe if it happens now, then I don't know. But for you to get shortage of fuel, it means you the chief in there, you do your work well. But what I'm saying is, in designing, right? Um, there are certain places you can, you should put your how do you call it your your fuel tanks. See, there are certain places you have to put your fuel tanks. You you, you cannot put all at maybe or just have one tank in the in the ship. Then that is where all your fuel is. You know, it's, 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 it's not accepted when it comes to design. So that is why I'm even saying that. You see. When when you go to the port and you are you know you, you are you are attacking you are attacking you, you, you have to also consider premium uh, stability. So if you are having maybe two tanks, you know the, all the tanks you might not be at you know one place for you to you know, load one tank and leave that and that your vessel will, you know, it will not be stable. You see because one place one side will be. How do you call it? Um, heavier than the other, and your vessel or, or train or incline, which is what we do. You know, in our normal routes, we have vessel uh, uh, cars that have inclined. You can see some car, and that's go to a certain level that on that side is you know very inclined. That little, you know, little, you know, even a small stone can cause it to capsize. No. On, 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 on our seats, we don't want that to happen. So in the design, on, we have certain places that we put stands. And so when you pick any um, shape, uh, how do you call it, um, shape design book, or maybe the diagrams of any shape, or maybe the general arrangement of the shape, you will be able to know, locate. They are doing this all because of what stability, trim, and what maybe to increase draft or all that. So what I was saying is, you can also use, so for instance, when you go to, when you are going to bunker, when you are going for bunker, for you to be able to be upright, you see, you need to, you know, to fill one tank, fill it to a certain point, then you leave all the, maybe this is outside you are filling, you fill all that, then you leave the, at the starboard, you leave it empty, then you, you, you will go. No, that is not how it works. Oh, Jesus. Uh, 
Please ask another question. Yes. I watched the certain movie and mm. the movie, mm. uh, when, when they were when they were and there was a sea storm, they threw some of the cargo overboard. Is it because they didn't calculate it well, or is because of the circumstance? Yeah, they got the circumstance there. You see. Oh, some time ago, uh, one man told, told me that he met, one captain told me that he, he met uh, a wave of, I think he said, is it 20 meters or something? <laughs> you understand? So if you are going to meet the, a wave of uh, 20 meters, you, 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 so you can imagine how, how high that, you know, that, high, that wave is. So the circumstance that happened, and they have to, they have no choice than to, you know, offload some of the cargo into the sea. And even with that, it means that there's nothing you could, you could do. Okay, sir, thank you. So, I have a question. Hello. Uh, yes. All right. Um, yeah. Sir, please, with the light ship displacement, yeah. does it mean that um, every ship light ship displacement is constant? Um, can it can it change due to certain factors? Yes, 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 yes. The the light weight can change. This is how it can change. For instance, uh, when at the initial stage, you design the vessel to have a light weight of maybe with a steel and with a certain engine. The engines will have their own weight. Then maybe you went to dry dock and then you decided to change some components and other stuff. Maybe the strangers, you decide to change the strangers, you decide to change framing, you decide to change other stuff. The light weight will surely change. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So it's subjected to change, but not how do you call it? Not I would not say to touch change for instance, maybe if it's ten thousand, maybe maybe the light is ten thousand, then if you change in between that huge maximum no. But at least slightly it will yeah, slightly it will, it will change. Yes. And as time goes on you will do that even the the steel you will try to you know, tell it and all that. So you'll be doing changes. You'll be logging your dust house, you know, you'll be doing so it changes, yes. It changes. Any other question? Any other question? Uh, all right. Ah, please say when they are designing ships, mm -hmm. they always design a ship to have only one function, or they can design a ship to be multi-purpose. All right. Um, some yes, some ships to know. Um, for for instance, uh, they are recently there was a ship um, at 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 uh, Pemadry Dock. It can carry uh, the you see the uh, the dry cargo, right? It was designed to carry the dry cargo, and they were, I think they were using it to carry uh, cement. Then later on, they 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 decided to you know, bring this forty footer uh, how do you call it, container. You you realize so they decided to you know change it and put containers and other stuffs on it. 
So in that circumstances, they it, it's, it's going to say we'll do our purpose. But mostly, you, when you are going to register, whether you are going for uh, if it's a cargo ship, whether it's a container ship, you're going for that. And some too, for instance, the you know it it varies. But when you are going, mostly when you are going to register for it, you you have to determine the type of vessel you are you are going to use. Yes. So, for instance, you can go and say that you are using for only passenger ship. You cannot say passenger ship. Then, at the same time, it's a, it's a container carrying you. you. You understand? Yes, you yeah. cannot do that. Yes. So, if you say it's a passenger uh, a vessel, if you say if it's a ferry, it should be a ferry. If it's a, so, you cannot just go and you will be doing anything you want. Yes. You barely see that thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So, I have a question. So, I hope you are okay. So, please, learn all these definitions. Because it can ask you to, you know, do that list, then, and explain. Or, they will list for the answer to explain any of it, any of them. So, Learn all of them, okay? <laughs> so, so learn all of them. So we are now moving to coefficient of forms. Uh, uh, yes, this is it. This is it. Is that five thirty? No, we are doing it two to finish. So. Okay. Um, yeah. I will win. No, he gave it to me. No, this is what he I to Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I finished the album. I'm tired. Hello. Hello, sir. Okay, so we are moving on to coefficient of forms. We will we will try to cover some, then the rest. Mm -hmm. we, will, we will try to cover some, then probably next week we will continue. All right, so coming. Okay, so can you see something like coefficient of forms? Hello, you can't see that. No, no, sir, no, sir. Nothing, sir. I'm coming. Okay. So can you see it now? Yes, sir. All right. So you can see coefficient of form, right? Yes, sir. All right. Oh, yes. um, uh, sir, I can't see anything. You can't see anything. Okay. You can't see anything. Can you see it now? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so, yes, sir. so today, today we just go through this at least something small. Then next week we will continue from there. Okay. All right. So coefficient of forms. Requirement of ships for you know um every ship has a certain form. So when you take container ships, their form of the whole might be different from when you take tanker 
vessels, though they are of the same what, form. So what you are saying that requ requirement of a ship or must be voluminous or bulky enough to provide sufficient buoyancy to support it to float. So every ship, you know, it has to be voluminous or bulky enough to provide sufficient buoyancy to support it to float. So if you have designed a vessel that will just sink, like it will, it, it will not, it, the horn itself will not be able to support itself. Uh, then it means that, that that vessel is no good. And again, have it centered position around the mid section, waiting to ensure adequate stability and motion what control. So, for instance, instability. And I'll use this. Alright. Okay. Alright. So have a central question around the mission begin to ensure adequate stability and motion control. So avoid generating undue resistance to motion so as to enable travel at good speed, reason for making the whole form slender. Avoid generation on due resistance to motion so as to enable travel at good speed, reason for making the whole form of slander. So these are the things that you must ensure whenever you are what you are designing what maybe whenever you are having a vessel or the requirement of every shape form. First, it has to be voluminous or work enough to provide certain buoyancy to support it to float. The the shape form that is what it has to be. Have its centroid position around the main section ready to ensure adequate stability and motion work control. Avoid generating undue what, resistance to motion so as to enable travel at good speed, raising for making the whole form what, slander. Then these requirements are met by its fitness, fatness, bulkiness, slenderness, etc. and are quantified in terms of what, coefficients. So all these things that we are saying, we need a certain what, coefficient, okay? We need we need a certain coefficient to be able to know that okay, this particular vessel is bulky, or this particular vessel is fine, or this particular vessel is fat. These are the coefficients we need. So before you design, you need to calculate for all these things to know that okay, the ship will be bulky, or the ship will be smaller, or the ship will be you know fat. You know, or the ship will be finest, or the ship will be slend slender, like it will be small. So when you are designing, okay, I need a, a never ship. So will the never ship be very small for me? You know, I need this. Will this one be very high for me? You know, I need this. This has to be this. So these are the initial calculation. As I as, said, as, as, as a naval architecture, you should be able to work. You should be able to have. So we are saying that. What a wall must do, be voluminous or bulky enough to provide sufficient buoyancy to support it to float. Have its central position around the midsection region to ensure adequate stability and motion control. Avoid generating under resistance to motion so as to enable travel at good speed, raising for making the whole form of slender. These requirements are met by fitness, its fitness, Fatness, bulkiness, slenderness, and are quantified in terms of what? Coefficient. So basically, this is the requirement of shepherd four. So you can be asked wherever, not basically for examination, but you ask you, okay, so what are the requirements of a ship four? Then you should be able to what? Able to say it. So we first take block coefficient. And we are saying that the ratio. Block coefficient is the ratio of the displaced volume to the volume of subscribing rectangular bus, which has the same principal dimension as that of the ship. So you have the ship hall. 
That is the ship home, right? That is the volume of the ship home. Then you create, this is a rectangle. So now when you, when you put the ship home into the rectangle, you will be able to calculate for, you know, like it's it, it bulkiness. You'll be able to calculate for its slenderness. You'll be able to calculate for its fatness. So now you see that here you cannot be able, the, the body is irregular object. You understand? The, the ship, the ship, the ship is irregular object. For you to be able to calculate for, you know, all the spaces and everything to get its fineness. No, you will not be able to calculate to get its volume or its fineness. So for you to get its fineness or its volume, then you need how do you call it a, a certain what a certain rectangle for instance you know uh, when you have a stone and you want to calculate for it volume when you put the stone in a jar of water the the water that will come out or that will fall now you can also weigh that particular water and see that that is the volume of the of the how do you call it the the volume that the the the, the stone has occupied so that is the exact principle we are going to portray here so we are saying that the ratio of the displaced volume to the volume of a circumscribing rectangular bus, which has the same principle or dimension as that of the ship. And we are saying that the CB is equal to that sign there is what? Hello? Uh, displacement. That's volume displacement. Uh, displacement. Yes, so you have the volume displacement. That is when you put that vessel in that rectangle the where the water has got into so it has displaced and what volume of what water so that is the displacement now what is the length of the whole shape and of the whole rectangle it's length breadth and what depth so the cb is equal to the the volume displacement over length times breadth times what times depth when you have this then you'll be able, able to calculate for the the bulkiness the fit uh, the slenderness and the fatness of the ship. So these are block, what you call block coefficient, and is donated by what? CB. I hope you are clear with that. So if you actually to calculate for the ratio of CB, you have to know that is the volume of displacement over length times breadth times short times depth. All right. This we are diving into, you know, into it gradually. We are diving into into the calculation. So now, know what you call CB and know the definition of CB is the ratio of the displaced volume to the volume of circumscribing of rectangular bus, which has the same principal dimensions as that of the ship. So realize that this one also has what? The same what? Principal what? Dimension. Then you go to make section area coefficient, which is donated by what? CM, subscript M. The ratio of the measure section area to the area of a circumscribing rectangle with the same principal dimension of the breadth and breadth and that of what of the shape. So when you get to the mid, mid section, when you get to the mid section of the shape, like the middle of the shape, I will say you you have to calculate for the area of that section. So for instance, the building that you are in, when you can be able to calculate for the area of that room. Is that not it? You will be able because you only have length, breadth, and width. So you will be, be able to calculate for the area. So the same thing happens to the shape. Now I want to find its midsection area coefficient. We want to know how bulky is it. We want to know how slender, uh, slyness is it. We have to know its fatness. So for us to know that, we first have to calculate for the the section was area. So you cut the vessel into two, you get it, then you realize that in the form of rectangle, you have what the depth and what and the breadth. Then when you have the length and the breadth, you can be able to what calculate for what for the area. So what you are saying is that the CM, which is the mid section area coefficient, is equal to AM. The AM is what the section area over BD. And the BD is the breadth times short, times the depth of the rectangle. So we have the rectangle. So we are picking the rectangle from what from the shape. So it's like more or less we are taking the shape to be of more of what rectangle and calculate for its area. 
So there's the shape. And you are saying since it since it has irregular objects, we will just use the box as in place of what of the shape. Then we calculate for its breadth, length, and what and area. Please, do you have a, any question to ask? Yes, okay, ask. Yes, I want to ask. So let me give us a question where you are asking us to define a midship and section failure coefficient. Instead of writing as a, a ratio of the midship section area, can we just say the formula? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, yes, 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 yes. When, when we ask you to, when we ask you to calculate for a mid session area coefficient, don't go and write all this ratio. Where the ratio of the mid session area to the area of no, 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 no. Just write CM is equal to AM over BD. I'll actually ask if maybe you have the definition, the definition of the mid section area. Instead of writing the ratio of the mid can you just see the formula? Oh, no, that one there. Yeah. Since you know the formula, I can explain. Or um, if you are able to get the formula, you should be able to explain. Because you are saying that the ratio of the so when you have the formula, you should be even that one should be very easy for you to explain. Okay. Yes. So when if someone explains it, the person and also like the formula, the person might get the full mark, and you guys didn't do might not get the full marks. You have to get that. Yes. So, so, so you have to, you, you have to make sure that uh, you you get that. Yes. We are go to water plane area coefficient. Yes. Then we go to water plane area coefficient. And water plane area coefficient. We are saying that the ratio of the water plane area to the area of the circumscribing rectangle with the same principal dimension of length breadth. So here, when we say the ratio, we see that you see the water plane area, that is, you see at every point it has a, a surface. The, the shape has a surface, like let's say the deck, the deck of the shape, it has a certain surface. So if you want to calculate for that surface, you know the vessel is irregular body. So you cannot get, you cannot calculate for the area from every section. One point you calculate, the other point you calculate, then before you can add all. So we just pick, how do you call it, a rectangle. Then we say that okay, the shape can fit into it. And the rectangle, we can really have length and breadth. So when you multiply length times breadth, you should be able to get the surface of area. Is that not it? So we pick that Mr. surface. I have a question. We said, I have a question. All right. This is from the formula. Yeah. Yeah. Is a review with the question be given us water plane area from the formula with the water plane area will be like, stated question or we have to find for the water plane area too as well no we have some question here but i mean we will, they will ask you okay a ship has a length of this has a breadth of this has this has that has that calculate for one water plane area coefficient B, block coefficient, and all that. So if you have your length, you have your breadth, and maybe you have your water plane area coefficient, uh, water plane area, when you have the area, you have the water plane coefficient. You are okay. Okay. And sometimes, okay. you, sometimes you will give you the coefficient and you will ask you to find the, the area, you understand. Then yes, you, can, you can solve. So, it comes in a different, different, way, different, different way. So you have to, you know, understand it. Thank you. All right. So then, yeah. Um, sir, is the area of the subscribe and break rule? Yeah. I mean, the breadth and the height. Yeah. It's the same. The, the breadth and the height of the sheet. Yes, and we are, what we are saying is here, yes, that is the same as the length breadth of the ship. So, what I'm trying to say is, you see, 
the ship is irregular body. You understand? It is very difficult to calculate for the area. You see the third, third uh, diagram, the first, the second, and the third. You see the way the water plane area is. Yes. You see, if you want to calculate for this area, it means that you have to divide it small, 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 and calculate for every smaller area. You understand? Which is very, very difficult. So, if, so what you say is okay. Then get a rectangle, put the vessel, in, pick the length of the vessel and the breadth, and just calculate for the what the area that you are going. Okay, sir. So, that is it. Thank uh, you. So that is the water plane. Then we move on to longitudinal prismatic coefficient. So we are saying that the ratio of the displaced volume to a circumscribing volume generated by multiplying the main ship section area by the length of the ship. What we are trying to say here is that I also said that prismatic coefficient in here is you want to know maybe the spaces in the ship that the vessel can, work, can carry. So if you're having a, a higher prismatic coefficient, then it means that you have a lot of space to carry with boost. So here, what we are trying to do is, okay, we want to know like the ratio at which we can carry a lot of boost. So here we see that this is the, the volume of what, of the ship. It's in, and then we've got for you to calculate the, the volume of this particular ship. Is that not it? So we also still have the rectangle. You put it in. So when you put it in, now with this one, we take already, you have to calculate for what? Uh, the midship what? Area. You already know the midship area. And the midship area was that. So you calculate for it. You multiply it by the length. Then the volume this particular vessel has displayed. So when you put it for there, you get the longitudinal or prismatic what? coefficient. We also have the vertical prismatic what? coefficient. So you can see that with the vertical prismatic, we are having the water plane area rather, not what, not the midship, because this one Lontina, so the Lontina is what, the length, and the vertical will deal with what, will deal with the water plane what, area. So at every point you have what, a water plane area, that is when you are standing at the top of the ship, and you are looking down, you realize that you always have what, a water what, plane area. So we have the Lontina with prismatic coefficient, we have the vertical prismatic code, which is donated by CPV. So all these, how do you call it, um, representations, you have to know them. When I say CP, what is the meaning of CP? Because I will not mention prismatic coefficient. When I mention CW, you should be you should know that's what I was plane area of coefficient. If I if I if I say midship session area coefficient, you have to know it's CM. If I say block coefficient, you have to know that it's what. CB. So you have to know all these things. So um, today we will end here. Okay. Um, God willing, first week when we meet, we will solve these questions. At you yourself to okay, let's solve it. Then we know that God willing, um, God willing, next, next week we are going to another hotel another topic all right so let's let's solve this then he said a ship of length one to two meter breadth 16 meter and float and floating at draft six meter in seawater of density 1.025 tons has a block coefficient of 0 0.69 massive session area 93 meters calculate a displacement and determine the prismatic and massive session coefficient. So the first calculate it for displacement uh, is done with it. And determine the prismatic and massive section coefficient. So with this, you see, we have CD equals to the volume displacement over length times breadth times short, the depth. So therefore, when you make change of subject here, you multiply the CB times this, you will get any for the parameters. You said a ship of length one to eight, one to two meter, breadth 16 meter, and floating and draft of the sea has a block 
coefficient. So we already have a CV. We already have length, breadth, and depth. So you can calculate for what? Volume displacement. Then when you get the volume displacement, you can go and calculate for displacement. So we know volume displacement. So length times breadth times depth. So we have CB times length times breadth times depth. We know CB, which is 0 0.69. So we also know 1, 2, 2, which is the length. We also know what the, the depth, the breadth and the depth, which is 6. So when we calculate, we are going to get 881.28 meters. Now, density is equal to what? Hello? Density is equal to what? And here, you can say that the displacement is the mass of the vessel. Is that not it? The displacement is the mass of the and the volume we have already calculated for. So now we want displacement. You make the mass the, the uh, that is the displacement the subject that is the mass of the vessel is equal to the volume displacement times the density. You already know what the density here. The volume displacement, which is 881. So you put it there, and they have also given the density, which is 1025. So you it's multiply it. that to get it. It's what you just said. Then, as you see, I said, you see that we have density is equal to mass over volume. Is that not it? And we have, we already know that this, the delta here, is displacement. Is that not it? So that, and we are saying that the displacement mass is the mass of the vessel. Is that not it? So we have that there. And we are saying that mass over volume. And we, are, we have already calculated for volume. That is that, that invented, uh, that invented, uh, how do you call it? That invented uh, delta. So then, if you have that, you make density the subject. So we have, we have, we make the mass, uh, the, the displacement the subject. So if you make the same, you get the uh, volume times what times density is that not it and you have already calculated for density volume displacement already so you multiply the volume displacement times the um, density you get this as the displacement do you get it now hello yes sir. yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. yes so now we have able to calculate for displacement now determine the prismatic and mesh section coefficient. So the prismatic we said is CP, which is equal to now the volume over area times length. We've already calculated for what? The volume what? Displacement, is that not it? So now you have the volume displacement. We have the A, and that is the mesh coefficient. And we have given mesh section area, the mesh section area, which is equal to is 90 or 3. Um, this thing should be 93. Okay. It's not 95. So make it 93, okay. Hello. Okay. okay. And times the length. The length was given 1322. So you multiply it by that. You are going to get 0 0.12. This, all these coefficients don't have units. So when you write prismatic coefficient and all that, make sure you don't bring what units. Because it's coefficient, you don't have units. But the displacement is measured in what? In tons. And now they have to mischief session what coefficient. And we are saying that the mischief session coefficient is AM over what BD. You already have what AM, which is the uh, mischief session area. So you put it there. You have the breadth, which is 16. You have the depth, which is 6. So you multiply the 16 times 6. You get 0 0.968. So that becomes what? That becomes all. You also have CM. When you have CB over CP, you know the CB formula and you know CP formula. Put them in. You realize that you get the same as CM. You get the same as this particular CM here. Okay? So when you do that, you are getting, you know CB already, which is 0 0.0. Um, yes, when you put it in 0 0.69 and the 0 0.6, that particular 0 0.69 is here. So you put it in. 
the no CP also, which is equal to what? 0 0.71. So if we went to, we are going to get 0 0.9 so that becomes what? That becomes um, how do you call it? The CM. So the CM, which is called CP over CP. No, no, no. I think until at this place. So so now you have the CM, which is equal to 0 0.9608. So sit down, put this with this particular thing, put the CB there and put the CP, uh, the CP formula. Then work it as realize that it will come to CM. You get the, uh, um, 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 that is the uh, coefficient of what mid section. Okay. Mid section coefficient, you'll be able to get that. Yes. Yes. So then we come to this one too. Okay. Yeah, I have a question. Hmm. I'm listening. Um, so the CP, yeah. um, that is the ratio of the um, A volume to the ratio of the volume of the screen, for example, yeah. above. So we found um, the inverted triangle to be zero. The, the inverted triangle is what? Don't say inverted triangle. <laughs> uh, we just but said it's displacement, it's okay. This, this. Yeah. Uh, and saying that the coefficient of the coefficient uh, because the coefficient have so I suppose that the ratio has the same unit, so they cancel out. Yes, yes, yes. Um, with uh, um, display, so the display, we have to use the limiter to the block coefficient to the post limiter. So, how is that possible? Like the the volume, the the it, 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 we had the the, the reading to be meters. But looking at the full of no 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 change change that. This is this is meter square. This it's supposed to be meter cube. Yes, it's supposed to be meter cube. All right. Yes yes. So 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 change that. Okay. Okay okay. okay. Right. So please have a question. All right. Mm, I'm listening. With the um with the current um, the, with the current solution you gave to the question. No, 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 no. I have an Hello. Hello, yeah, I can hear you. Uh, please, with the current definition you gave to the mission coefficient, I want to uh, with the current solution, sorry, I want to ask if you are defining Relationship coefficient. Is it okay, okay. to see the ratio? Um, is the ratio of the block coefficient to the prismatic coefficient? So you have to use the old definition given here. Uh, um, the mid, the mid, uh, the mid, mid, mid shape coefficient. Yeah, because uh, with the solution you give, you use the block coefficient and the prismatic. Yes. So if you are defining, is it okay to use it, or you should just? <laughs> Well, you can use this one too, because since when 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 you do the how do you call the calculations, when 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 you when you when you do your change of project, you, know, you get back to this. So I think you can also that it's not advisable because if some the person is marking has not worked this thing out and decide to cancel it. Okay, yes, so we will yes go by the the normal in uh, yes. For you to you know, avoid certain certain data from certain people. Mm -hmm. So I hope I will be clear with that. Okay. So let's go to this. A fifteen thousand tons dead weight ship has the following particulars: length, breadth, depth, CP, and that determined block coefficient. Mostly, understand the question. Know the values that have been given to you, and now work it out. Okay. Don't just start and begin anything. It says you can wait for block coefficient. How do you calculate for block coefficient? Because the block coefficient is volume displacement over length times breadth times depth. You have length there, you have breadth there, you have depth there. But how do you find for volume displacement? I hope you understand that. So before you can find that, it means that you have to go and find for volume displacement first. And how then do you find volume displacement? 
So we can see that yes. so the C D is equal to dead weight over that. Is that and it's zero point six. So then we can find we already know C D. So we can find for what? And we know C D we we don't know, but we know we also know dead weight because a fifteen thousand tons dead weight. So when you calculate for that, we can get a displacement of that. Is that not it? Then you see that that twenty five thousand over this. The volume displacement there. The first one, you realize that we find for this. I hope you have seen this one. I'll be sorry. So here, this we are looking for volume displacement. So when you change, when you have density is equal to displacement over volume displacement. Density is equal to displacement over volume displacement. So when you change the volume displacement to the other side, you bring the density there. You understand? That is what is there. So we have the 25,000 over the density, over the length times breadth times what times depth, you get 0 0.721. Okay? I hope you understand that. So I've got a question. Okay. This 1.025, is it, is it constant? That is seawater, the density of seawater, yes. But unless it's specified, if it's not specified, then we are using seawater. It's not specified on the question. Yes, yes. So, so you can yes, so you use the 1.025, so that it's not specified. But if they specify it in the question, then you have to do the specified one. What they ask you to use, okay? Okay, sir. Uh, yes, so it is the volume of the seawater. So I'm saying that before you can. Sir, sir, is it one point five volume of water? No, one point two five the density. Okay, so, uh, the one point zero two five the density. And I'm telling that you see that density is equal to displacement over volume displacement. Is that not it? So when when you when when you do when you interchange. We want to find volume displacement. Volume displacement will go, then the displacement will come under the displacement. So you are having, you already know displacement already. So you are having displacement over density. So that is what is there. Okay. I hope I hope you understand it. Hello. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. You have, you have to get a pen behind and draw this thing and write it yourself. Yes. I'm listening. Is it? Question two. I'm saying that. I'm saying that you have you have a um, dead weight coefficient. You have all these parameters, and you have to find for block coefficient, water plane area, mid section coefficient, and all that. And I'm saying that, you know, see, how then do you find for your displacement? Because you need volume displacement to find for CB. So if you need volume displacement, you need volume displacement, you need length, you need breadth, you need depth. You have length, you have breadth, you have depth, but you don't have volume displacement. So you have to search for where you can get volume displacement. And before you can get volume displacement, you know that density is equal to um, um, displacement over volume of displacement. Is that not it? So you are one way ahead. And you also know that CD is equal to dead weight over displacement. And you know CD to be 0 0.6. So, and you know dead weight too. Then it means that you can find for displacement. Is that not it? So you put your 15,000 at where DWT is over displacement equal to 0 0.6. Then you, 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 you multiply the 0 0.6 by the 1,000, 15,000. You will get, uh, that is the 15,000 over the 0 0.6 because you have to do change of subject. So if you do change of subject, you get 15,000, which is the dead weight. Then you will get the 0 0.0. 0 0.6 and like so you get 20, 25,000 tons. Now you know your displacement, is that not it? And you know that if you know your displacement, you know density is called displacement over volume displacement. 
So then do your change of subject. Move the volume displacement to the left side and bring the this uh, density to the right side. So when you do that, you will get the 25,000 over 1.025. There at the top, that is the volume displacement. You know your length, your breadth and depth. So you put it there, you get 0 0.72 to 1. That becomes what? That becomes your, your CB. Then the water plane area coefficient, CW, which is equal to AW over LB. You already know your uh, water plane area, which is straight, and you put it there. You know your length, you know your breadth, you put it there and so main shape session coefficient. That one you know the CB over CP. You know CB already. You know CP already. You put it there, then you solve. Okay. Yes. Okay. So go through this. If you don't understand anything, let someone help you. Go willing next week. We will we will talk about special note on low coefficient. There are very few. Go willing next week. We will talk about it. Then we we'll move on to other hot subject. So go study this very well. You have the questions. They solve some of the questions. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. You have the questions, right? Yes, sir. Yes. You have the questions, eh? Yes, so, yes, I'll solve the one and two for you. So, solve the three, the four, the five, the six, and all of them. Then, make sure you understand wow. them. Because you draw, you, you very soon write quiz on this. Okay. So, any questions before we close the class? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. if, you are, if you are answering such questions like this, are you expected to draw them before you answer them or you can answer them straight away? No, 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 no. Straight answer them straight away. Don't, don't draw them. Okay. But in, can we be asked to draw them? Oh, yes. Uh, not, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm no one actually to be drawing this. Yes. What you actually be drawing is uh, the, the definitions. Okay, you can okay. ask the you can ask to draw the transverse section, the, the water plane, the, the, all the drawings in there. That's the they can ask to you can ask to draw them and, and define them. Okay, sir. You can be asked to draw them, but this one's no one. Will. But I just have to know how it is. Okay. Please, any question? Yes, sir. All right. Is that to clear my thoughts? When the density is not given, yeah. we have we have to use the 1.025 as a density. Yes, yes. That is density of seawater. Okay. Thank you. So please, is it always going to be seawater and not fresh water? So if the question says that fresh water, use fresh water. Okay. So no. always read the question. If the question says that maybe the the vessel has this in fresh water. Use fresh water. Okay, sir. So the density of seawater and fresh water are they the same? No. Mm. We know fresh water density is what? Who knows the density of fresh water? <laughs> Who knows the density of fresh water? One. One gram. One. One. Uh, let me take you. Hmm. All of you should go and find the density of fresh water. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes, okay. All right. Is that? Is that? You are saying you find the density of fresh water. One gram per centimeter. I said you have the density of fresh water in kilograms. Is what? Tap. Okay. Yes. So. So, so you should mostly use the thousand kilogram per meter cube. So that is it. Um, any question again? Any question again? We are in class. Any question again? I hope you will not hear anything out of us. Hello. I hope you are not hear anything out of Okay. 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 Okay.
How do we see the class? Is that Hey, who is that? Who is watching you here? Who is watching you here on the background? I think it's safe. Hey, hey, hey. You are, you are, you are. So I think. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think some people don't want to. Yeah, let's listen, let's listen. Okay. Yeah, I think some people don't want to. You know, continue the class. So they want to. Let's say, please, last question, last question. Okay, yes. Uh -huh. I was asking about the density of water when the ship is on fresh water. Mm. Yes, and I'm saying they can give you 1,000. Yes. Kilograms. I'm saying that. Okay, so you can use 1,000. But yes. my, my concept is that you see it is in kilograms, so we have to change it to tons and those that. Yes, yes, yes. So is it composed that we have to change it before? Or? Sometimes you can finish or then you change the final answer into tons. Okay. You, you understand? Because even the LBP and all that, it's, it's in uh, meters, is that not it? And, and kilogram per meter, there's two. Sometimes when you finish, you can change sometimes to yes. But it's only for you to get fresh water and all that. But then any, anything can happen to yes, depending on the question that was given to you, then 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 you 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 work it out. Okay. Okay, sir. All right. So if no more question, um so I say on the course of kilogram, could it be one? Maybe what is for fresh water? Is it than your ton? Yeah, could it be because I mean, since you're actually uh, talking about sheep here, could it be ton? Like, like ton? Yeah, I mean, that's saying that ton per what? Like, for uh, density of seawater, like, the same thing this. The sea water density, that's the density. I will, I will, I will always, you know, I will always advise you to be kilo. But this one, this one is was kilogram per meter cube, then you in tons. Oh. Hello. Uh, what I will advise is that um, get your conventions how to calculate for uh, uh, calculate for tons into meters um, 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 and all that okay that thing when you are working it's depending on the question that has been given to you here they always they are giving you that 1.025 tons per meter is that not it so when we're having the sea water and fresh water you can be able to also convert it to tons per what, meter do, do you understand that Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, you can also convert it to tons, then you work with it. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. 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 Yes.